My 8th gen Civic Si is a really good car. However, there's two major issues that I have with it. Number one is the stock suspension. Number two is the manual transmission. In this video, we're gonna fix up the Civic's transmission. It's actually in really good condition, but even in like a really good borderline brand new Civic Si, the transmission just feels garbage. It's not smooth between gears. It's a little sloppy. It's just overall not great. The clutch especially, like it, it feels very spongy and just disconnected. This is a very common thing across Civic Si's, basically from like seventh, eighth, ninth, and like sometimes even the 10th gens with the Type R's, they all have transmission issues. I don't know what the deal with Honda is, why they can't get a transmission right, but we're gonna fix that today. So on this table, I've got a lot of stuff. We're going to do a manual transmission fluid flush, going to do a shift boot. We've got a shift knob right here. Now, this stuff is really interesting. So Hybrid Racing is one of the most like reputable companies in the Honda game. They do a lot of shifter stuff, but they also have a kit meant to upgrade the entire clutch system. And not only that, we have a bunch of springs for the shifter, as well as shifter bushings. And I think with all of those items, transmission is going to feel way better and I'm gonna have a lot more confidence. Now, I will put a little caveat out there. I actually quite like the way that the shifter itself feels in stock form. There's a lot of shifter kits that replace the entire shifter assembly, but because I like the stock one so much, I figured why not just reinforce that and make it a little bit stiffer, a little bit better, and then just keep it simple, just run stock. Now, that's not to say that I won't switch to, you know, like a hybrid racing short shifter in the future, but for now, I think this is gonna be great. Go ahead and crack the cool. All right, sick. Just like that. Cool. All right, so we're gonna take care of the shift boot real quick. Got the old one, got the new one. We're gonna see if we can make this work. There's four fasteners hold it on, it's Torx. Go ahead and pop these guys off. Okay, the little retainer comes off. Now you got the trim piece separated. All right, I love seeing all the, uh, the schmutz that sits under the trim. Stuff's pretty gross. It looks like it's stapled in, so we're just gonna try to pry these little, little guys off and see if that helps. Oh yeah. Nice, easy enough. All right, so here's the thing. You're likely supposed to use the same staples that the stock one used. You guys can see that. Um, I think I'm just gonna sandwich it between it. It looks great, it looks fantastic actually. So I think this is gonna be all that it really needs. I'm just gonna fasten it down. Okay, well there we go, that was pretty easy. Oh yeah, you can see you can just kind of squish the rubber through. And there we go. This is what we're going to be replacing. Comes like this. Pretty soft. Now, we get the top one in. Like that. So real quick, I'm gonna show you the boots. I have this collar here, and I just gave the boot a couple cuts to be able to fit the collar. Now I'm going to take a zip tie and just secure it, and make sure that the boot doesn't, you know, sag over time or fall off. All right, so I'm going to explain it real quick. Apologies for using GoPro. This is loose. Uh, what you're gonna do, put the collar attachment threaded in there. Just take a little wrench, tighten it like that, and boom. Then, you just do that. 
And now you have a super good looking shift knob. That's awesome. So I'm going to be using the hybrid racing shifter bushings. This is the larger one. And then it also has the smaller guy right here. So we're gonna go ahead and plug those in. Comes with replacement cotter pins, as well as some grease to get it in a little bit easier. So these shifter bushings were a little bit tricky to install. It's a little tough to pop them in and out of the shifter cables, but it actually made probably one of the best differences for the transmission feel. Overall, it just feels a little bit more tighter going in and out of gear, which is exactly what I want. While so much of the car is out, like the intake, the battery, etc., I'm also going to install detent springs. Now, they're not the easiest thing to install. You actually have to take off an engine mount to access one side, and it's overall, it, it's kind of a pain, but they actually made a drastic change in the shifting feel. So there's three springs under these three bolts. Now the issue is that we have to take off the engine mount, the battery bracket, which was there, as well as the ECU. So it's a lot of work to do these, but the actual process, once you get all that stuff off, is really easy. Nice. Yep, so there's the little spring, and we are replacing them with a slightly longer version, and I would assume slightly stiffer. You can see the comparison there, but pretty pretty easy process. It just kind of goes in place. Yep. Make sure that the ball is still there. Yep. The check valve ball. Yeah, I didn't mention that. There is a ball right at the bottom. Just be very careful not to jiggle that about or, you know, lose it. Yeah, yep. Yeah, we gotta be very careful with that stuff. Mm -hmm. Real quick, here's the shifter assembly. There's a bolt that you're going to take out and this is going to kind of release these springs that are circled here. Just be very careful to keep everything contained, keep constant pressure on it. You should be fine. Now for the CMC upgrade, I actually did not film very much of it at all. And there's a good reason for that. To be honest, it's not a fun install you have to get like your entire, basically the top half of your body is like engulfed into the car. Um, it's not a very pretty install. And it's actually, it, it's kind of weird. So I ended up putting it back to stock a couple days after. I really did not like the way that the CMC felt. Now, what do I mean by that? So when you're changing out the CMC and the slave cylinder, um, you're changing a a good amount of the, the actual clutch assembly. You're basically doing all of it. It made it so that, I'm not even kidding, the clutch pedal engages literally at the top. And I mean the genuine top. Now, this is fine if you're building a race car or a drag car. That's not me. Mine's a street car. I would much rather have an actual normal engagement point that's kind of like in the middle or maybe a little bit lower rather than literally at the top because it makes it it makes it feel kind of whack. That's not to say that it didn't feel good. It actually felt pretty crazy. Um, when you, I, I can tell how it would eliminate like any sort of grinding because it just seems like it's more of a stronger pressure. So I think if you're having like genuine issues with grinding and you don't mind having a higher engagement point, I think it's a great mod. I ended up putting it back to stock, so I'm probably gonna sell mine online. So if you want it, hit me up on Instagram. But yeah, I don't know if I do that for a street car, not sure. Lastly, probably the best and easiest thing to do for your transmission is to flush the manual transmission fluid. I ended up using OEM Honda fluid. Just, that's probably like the easiest thing that you can do. It takes probably like 10 minutes. It's the exact same as an oil change, if not easier, because you don't have a filter. Okay, to get you guys caught up to speed, I'm recording this uh, about like a week or two, maybe a little bit more after I installed everything. So uh, everything's the exact same except for the CMC kit I put back to stock. So that's the clutch master cylinder as well as the uh, clutch slave cylinder. You guys are gonna put in comments, I'm sure, but like I spent about three hours adjusting the clutch, which you, you can do. There's a fair amount of adjustability. It's still, did not really make that big of a difference. So ah, yeah, back to stock. However, this feels great. I mean, like going into gear, it just feels really good. Everything is just more 
stable. It kind of snaps into gear with those detent springs. It's an actual like good transmission now. And I think that the fluid probably, honestly, like if you want the easiest way to make a car feel good, change out all the fluids. When the car is cold, I can really tell the difference between the fluid that was in here and the brand new fluid. Because when it was cold, the car would kind of like, it wouldn't be happy to go into gear. Um, and now it, it, it's more consistent at like basically every operating temp. So definitely change out fluid. I highly recommend that. And I will say, I do actually think that the detent springs, which were kind of a pain to install, I think that they're worth it. I really enjoy having it kind of snap into gear, like pop into gear, rather than like slush kind of mesh into gear. I think this feels a lot better. Like it, now it feels really good shifting it hard. Whereas before, it kind of felt like every time you slammed it into gear, you were like hurting the transmission. Now it feels like it can actually kind of stand up to it. So I, man, I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it's gonna be absolutely fantastic on track. I'm hoping that it never develops any grinds. Currently it doesn't really have many grinds. Um, so I'm just, I'm hoping it stays that way. But yeah, it feels great. I do get the hype behind K-Series now, by the way. It's a good engine, man. It just revs to the moon. It's smooth. It's, it. it's, a, good, it's a good engine. It's a good engine. Apologies on kind of a late upload schedule. I missed, uh, I think, like a week or two. I actually got surgery on my left arm. Um, so I actually still have stitches. That's why I'm kind of driving with like one hand. Um, it's a little bit uncomfortable but stitches come out in two days. So hopefully that all goes well um, and I'm back to normal, but kind of annoying. So I took some time off um, and yeah, I mean, hey, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll put all of the parts that I got uh, in the description. So feel free to take a gander. Um, and yeah, let me know if you have any questions. You can hit me up on Instagram as well. And yep, that should be it. All right, see you guys.